Yo, what's going on guys? Sekapoko here, bringing you another 7th Nilly Sins Grand Cross video. For this video, we're going over Guild Boss Season 3 and giving you a complete guide of what to expect in the fight and give you a whole rundown of each of the stages so you know exactly what to expect while you're doing this. Uh, this is going to be a guide that's going to be based on my first day impressions on this boss and of course the point breakdowns that you can see while doing this. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alrighty, boys and grills. So we're gonna be going over the guild boss pretty briefly, and the first thing we're gonna be going over is the point values and what you can get really get out of it. So the new guild boss is um, a very very cool guild boss because it's brand new and it's new content, and that's always fun. But uh, the points are pretty easy to break down. They're pretty similar as the previous guild bosses, as you can see, with a normal, hard, and extreme variant. Major difference here, of course, and the rewards starting off are actually very different, and we're actually starting off with a super awakening coin, which is very much needed on the Japanese version. So on the weekly, we're actually getting super awakening coin increases so that means that there's a major change actually brought into the game so we actually have super awakening coins on the weekly so we get more xp for our super awakening characters now as i said in my previous video regarding the three viewers three uh, matches there is a major issue on the jp version and the issue is the loss of xp and not having enough uh, xp to super awaken your characters not so much the ultimate level but more so the xp so by getting more xp and things like guild boss and other other events we're getting lots more characters super awakened so we can do more things so um on the point schema uh, looks like there's like it's pretty similar to the previous guild bosses and i put in a whole list of turn loss as well as additional points so if you want to use this of course this will help you out in general but it's very similar to all the previous guild bosses the three major differences that i'm seeing are first off we're going to see there's uh for debuff using infect or a stance cleanse and detonate you're going to getting additional points by using those types of skills infect is the anti-healing type ability stance cleanse being a stance removing effect any type of one of those i don't think it's a stance uh it might be a stance disable effect that might trigger the points. I'd have to do some testing. We'll have to find out. And last up, we have a detonate skills, which is basically the impact skill that you see from Roxy, from Red King, etc. Those type of explosion mechanics uh, are going to give you extra points. Um, the additional things that are getting here is that there's actually no point value on specific damage unless the damage is over 100,000 or on all the way up to 250,000. Anytime there's any kind of damage over 250,000, you're actually getting a very large amount of points, getting 80 points every time that happens. And I believe that's going to be per target kind of hit, but I, don't, I haven't done the guild boss yet, so we're going to have to check it out. Uh, as far as the additional points, the same points as last time for number of surviving characters, remaining HP, team composition, and max damage points as well as turn count. So regarding the guild boss, there is a very um, very interesting set of abilities here. You can look, see he looks kind of badass. Um, he's got 143,000 HP, 3,700 HP, um, and he also has two little fodder guys, a little shield as well as a little sword on the side here. And each one of these have you know, an HP value which can trigger different things. So the first ability for this character is gonna be uh, a demon shot. Removes the de buff effects on all enemies as well as deal 150% damage to everyone on the field. It does 150 at rank one and 220 at rank two. The second ability for him is gonna be called annoyance. <laughs> It's funny. Uh, restores 20% of all HP for all allies uh, and, and cancels debuff effects. So basically it's a cleanse and 20% uh, HP heal. Um, and he uses that, I believe, every four turns. And his ultimate ability is going to be deal 630% attack damage against a single enemy and reduce special move gauge by three. Uh, he starts off with two ultimate gauge. Immune to... Uh, I think it's all stun, petrify, freeze, and... Stance, I think it's Stun, Petrified, Freeze, and Stance Disable, I think it says. Attacks with Evasion uh, attacks with evasion Effect are disabled. So you, if you wanted to use Derriere and try to avoid him, uh, it doesn't work. Oh, the boss also has um, Hidden. Uh, so it's an ability that uh, just recently has popped up in the more recent sets of content. Essentially, it uh, makes it so you can't target the main boss and you can only target the fodder. He's actually fully in the background and the only thing way you can do damage to him is with an area effect attack. The next ability is that if the boss survives alone on the battlefield, the debuff effect is canceled for two turns and damage debuff notifications are added up. You also use move, uh, use skills, move skills, and improve skill rank. So if he uses anything, he get um, his ultimate gauge increases. If he use it, he basically gets faster ulti rush from by doing that. For every surviving ally, uh, the character's defense related uh, abilities will increase by thirty percent, and th then the ally becomes impassable, increases attack related stats by thirty percent. Um, so this is this ability basically is the same as kind of like Loxinia's ability for uh, his passive for the green Loxinia. He has defense related stats while allies are alive, and then increases attack stats while allies die. 
For the green shield, the green shield that's going to be running around with him is going to have two, uh, two different abilities. The first ability is going to do 180% attack against one enemy, and only attack skills can be used for one turn. It's going to basically do a Slater debuff on those characters, and it's going to do 180 or 300% damage based on the rank, and do it for one or two turns. The second ability is going to take a stance for two turns, provoke the enemy, so it would be a full taunt, and when, and when attack, reduce damage by 130%. It's also going to use the taunt every two turns turns and of course this thing is immune to all um freeze petrify um stun and stance disable and of course it, it has attacks with evasion are disabled so you if there is a character with derriere it looks like they just goes through that the second character um the second fodder is going to be a sword type thing and it's going to do 270 percent attack um super burst against a single enemy and the super burst uh does 10 times more damage to buff targets wow so if you use a derriere, you're going to get instant one bop by this fucking sword. Holy shit. Yeah, don't use any characters that give buffs. This this guild boss claps derriere. It is built to kill derrieres. Okay. The same immunities as before. And uh, of course, it's going to have probably attack priority against characters with buffs. So uh, do not use buffs at all in this guild boss. It will clap you. And uh, this ability will be used every three turns. For the hard variant of this fight, um, it's going to do all damage. Uh, it's going to do damage to you against all enemies by 150% of the attack power and then reduce ultimate gauge by one uh, on the hard variant. The second rank of it is going to do 220% and also reduce ultimate gauge by three. And the heal for this character, of course, he's going to have the same heals before. He's going to heal for 30% of the reduced HP for all allies. Uh, it also cleanses all debuff effects. The ultimate ability on the hard variant is going to uh, inflict 250% attack against um, all enemies and um, give them, actually, it's actually going to apply the ruin effect. Uh, so any debuffs that are on the allies, it's actually going to increase damage dealt by 20%. That's, that, the sword and shield do not fuck around, dude. On the hard difficulty, the, um, the fodder are going to be a little bit different. They're going to uh, damage all enemies by 120% of their attack value and disable recovery skills for one turn. Uh, it's uh, on the rank two of this ability. It's going to do 180% attack and then also disable recovery skills for two turns. The stance up for this character is going to be uh, for two turns taunt all enemies and reduce all damage taken by 200%. And of course, the rank to uh, the uh, attack sword gives a new 450% attack against all enemy uh, against one enemy, and of course, apply super burst, which is going to do uh, 10 times extra damage against buff targets, and of course, target buff targets. For the extreme variant, uh, it's going to be the exact same thing as the first phase um, on the. Uh, for the fodder as well as the main enemy they're going to have the exact same abilities as for normal and for the second phase it's going to be the exact same abilities as was for hard the difference here is that damage taken from special moves on the second phase are reduced by 50 percent if you do i don't have my ur gear on either I think we saved these. If they get to use that, if they use that on um, Easton, I'm screwed. Should I use that or save that? I think I should save that. We should just do like this, right? One, two. Three, 
He's already his ulti. This is really good. Can't, I, you can't do a Texas at all. How many turns is this on there? It's on for two turns, right? So I can't use this right away. And I get this next turn, so I'll be able to get it up. So we'll use one, and then we'll do a move here. We'll get our ulti up. I don't know if I want to use it. Well, I should use it, right? Cool. All right, we're now in our next phase. So next turn, I can heal, cleanse this off, and then we heal the full. Right? Alright. So, one, two. Okay? I've now applied a debuff on everyone, right? They're, they have six debuffs up. I can either ulti or go for BDM rush. Should we rank up Blue Demon Meliodas? I'm gonna say yes. Easy boys. Easy. Bro, bro, bro. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Who's the master now? His name is Sakapoko. That's what's up. All right. All right. First try, baby. Yeah. All right, so let's go over the rewards that you get from guild boss this time around. Uh, right now we just hit rank 100, but I'll go over those rewards in just a bit. So first off, we get a Super Awakening coin at 300 points. The next thing that we get is uh, three SR pendants at uh, 600 points. Next up, we get a, looks like, one blue stone at 900. We get 50 anvils at 1200. Uh, looks like an SSR pendant at 1500. At 1800, we're gonna get another 50 anvils. Uh, following that, 2200, we're getting another SSR pendant. Following that, the rewards keep going. Uh, now we're getting another Super Awakening coin at 2,500 points. At 
20, uh, 3,000 points, it looks like. That was uh, SSR Pendant. At 4,000 points, you're getting a UR chest. And then at 5,000 points, you're getting um, 50 anvils as well. And finally, at 6,000 points, you get another set of of Super Awakening Coins, so that's our final reward. So you go point rewards all the way up to 6,000 this time around, every single week. It makes Guild Boss worth doing. You get shit out of it, makes everyone wanna hit 6K points. I like this net model. really welcome change, solid job. Very well done on the Guild Boss. Uh, as far as the ranking rewards on JP, right now, uh, let's go take a look. Uh, first place, 1,500 coins. Second place, 1,200. Third place, 1,000. Fourth through 20 is 800. 21 through 50 is 700. 51 to 100 is 600. And finally, 0% through 10% is 400 coins. Pretty similar how it is to on the global version, except on the global version, they changed this um, so that it's a little different and better. So um, on the global version, it's better right now for uh, anyone in top 0% uh, or 1%, but... Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I like this guild boss a lot. It's cool. It's very different. You're not doing a single target dairy rush. You're doing something completely different. Uh, doing the AOE strategy is kind of cool. I bet you I can get a lot more points by doing this, by trying out different strategies and doing different things. Uh, turn counts can be a bit, very of a bitch, but it looks like you can rush this thing, get real, real high points real quick. You might get much higher points than this. Of course, this is just an idea of what you can achieve. Um, but I'm already at, say, 5,700 points top of my guild. But it's the first day it's been out, so I don't know if this is the best strategy. But hopefully it works out for you. All right, guys. Well, my name is Seka Poco. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, of course, like and subscribe. All the fun stuff. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.